So, Josh, you will kick us off with The Guardian. So, yeah, the main story they're going with and a few other papers, uh, which is calls for tougher windfall tax after Shell posts obscene record profits. They have made profits of nearly £40 billion pounds this year. Now, it's really hard to sort of visualise what 40... I mean, just to give you an idea of it, mm. it's more than all three of our salaries combined. Right. So Probably more a, than all huge... GB News presenters combined. Really? But this is, world, we don't know what this is worldwide, though, to, to be fair. This is not. This is British worldwide. Thing. They make about £2 billion from the UK. OK. But still, when you have the Shell's new chief executive, he's saying... These are incredibly difficult times, mm. not for them or its shareholders, it has yeah. to be said. And the answer to that is to continue to make sure that we provide energy to the world and make loads of money. Uh, he didn't say the There was a quote, money. he said that this, these companies, we're, we're experiencing difficulties as well because we're a sort of company that has to invest 10 or 15, 20 years into the future. Yeah, exactly. It's like, yeah. Yeah. We're, we're all suffering. We're all, yeah, <laughs> but also, there's a little threat here. He says, so like, you know, he had to make sure that the, the, the lights are on, which otherwise would have gone off, i.e., we made loads of money, but yeah. if it wasn't for us, you would all be like... The totally alternative is, it's not necessarily... I mean, you know, there is a tendency to suspect that it's uh, that they are war profiteering, essentially, that Putin invades Ukraine and that they have reaped all the benefits. It's a bit more complicated than that, to be fair, I think, is it? I don't know, what do you think? I don't know if it's that much more complicated. I mean, it's, that is, that's certainly one thing that's led to the, the, the increase, isn't it? So... That's why it gives me pause, because normally I'm against all tax, really. But if it's the result of a war, which is just another form of government messing about, then, then maybe we should do this to offset it. The only thing that gives me pause is that I find myself agreeing with Ed Miliband and Ed Davey, mm. which is a rule of thumb, and I don't know much about a topic. I think just do the opposite or whatever they say. So I'm, I'm not sure, Simon, anymore. Ed Miliband's, uh, one of his sort of landmark uh, proposals was, was about capping the, the profit of, of energy companies a few years ago, and it seemed crazy then, didn't it? Does Ed Miliband have landmark proposals? Is that the word I want? I don't know. It was one of those ones he had etched but into his tombstone. One of his little it, ideas. In his courtyard garden. In April, the, you know, everybody's energy bills are going to go up 40%. Now, that's even though costs have gone considerably down since then. Yeah. But yes, two of the things that they were talking about, which do make sense, are one is to cut these uh, the tax breaks that they get for investing uh, in new oil and gas fields, like they're going to make the profits down the end of that. So yeah. the idea that we're in some inadvertent way paying for that, and also to backdate, backdate some of those profits, the taxes, to yeah. 2022, which is when these ridiculous profits started to really come hit. It does seem like they need to update the mechanisms by which they, they uh, tax multinationals of this kind because it's quite easy for them to move their profits around, isn't it? They have like, means and ways of uh, saying, oh, well, we have to pay for the intellectual property right of the Shell logo, you yeah. know, and that, that happens to be based in the Cayman Islands or something. And and woof, all it goes, you know, so and you're left with a couple hundred grand. 134 million for last year, tax. Not enough. Out of 40 billion, I mean, come on. That, that... barely is all the GB News presenters put together. <laughs> Do you want to mention the picture on the front page there, or is that of no... Well, I mean, yeah, the, he's, uh, that's uh, Zelensky's hanging out with uh, the uh, European Commissioner Chief. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know what he's doing. Has he made her a quilt or a he's blanket? He signed or her a, a blank... Ukraine flag. Oh, so that's, what, nice that's so know. sweet. But and... essentially the story is that, yeah, they ain't joining the EU. Uh, at least not uh, in any uh, yeah. realistic time. Not in any right. sort of yeah. sense of that they're going to bring the war into uh, it. And, and the Afghan refugees told to quit London. Yeah, I mean, this the, the way that the Afghani refugees have been treated, I think, is, is disgusting. These are people who helped us and has lives... But they're not being, being kicked out. They, they're leaving London for Weatherby. That sounds quite well, nice. Yeah, but they've been here for last year. They've set up their homes. Their children are now attending schools, doing right. exams and whatnot. Yeah. Look, yeah, they're staying in a four-star hotel in Kensington. It's not That's not so bad. Yet. But we got here a general, former Afghani general. Uh, we've got, like, translators. These are people whose lives were put at risk, who have helped the UK. Yeah. And now to be sort of sent off and they're going to be like an hour from the town centre up in Leeds and it's going to be there. Some of them already have jobs. So this isn't ideal. They're going to be ideal. near Leeds, Simon. That's how That's bad it is. Near Leeds. I mean, the Guardian does make <laughs> it sound like that. Keep them in a four-star hotel in Kensington indefinitely. Perhaps things should have been done more immediately. Perhaps yeah. Whether they should yeah. have been the first port of call.